All right, a little bit of a late start today, but it's going to be a good one. Forget VS Code and use cursor instead. Now, most people know I do like NeoVim and, and other editors. I'm always kind of jumping around, but I'm not a professional programmer. So um, I want to get that out of the way. A lot of professional programmers, actually, I think the, the biggest IDE used in professional programming would be IntelliJ. Uh, but for us, you know, more hobbyists or, or smaller creators and, and other things, you know, maybe you're just getting started. A lot of people use VS Code probably in, in that realm of things. So uh, I ran into this cool project called Cursor, and it's basically just a fork of VS Code, but with a AI version that doesn't suck. And I'm like, oh, OK, that's kind of cool. So I kind of wanted to explore that because when it comes to like Copilot, Copilot's great for predictive text, but for actually fixing code, it really is awful. And it's fine for, hey, I'm going to have this new line of code and stuff. But eh, other than that, I don't I don't think anything else. <laughs> uh, how you all doing today? Hey, Ram. Long time no see, man. And gaming. How you doing? Uh, it should be a fun one today, though. Uh, I, I, I've been picking out some stuff. And let me see. Do we have... We'll grab this guy on over. Um, and let's see, what was it called? Cursor.sh is the actual, actual program that I'm talking about. This is basically just uh, integration of OpenAI is really what it is. Uh, so we'll do that. Let's sign in too. I'm going to do that. Um, I'm, I'm going to just do my sign in real fast. Why we got that. All right. Uh, we're going to do the free plan, um, as the. I mean, this is not sponsored or anything. I just wanted to try them out. So we only got like 40 slow GPT-4 and 200 GPT-3.5 uses a month. Enough to try it out at least. So we'll see. I don't know if I'll pony up the $20. If it's just as good as using GPT, then I might because GPT is 20 bucks. So that's the idea behind all this. Uh, so we're just going to do the free plan and see see how that treats us as far as trialing this thing out. I think it'd just be fun. And here's the first time launching it. Um, we're going to keep the code command for the command line. And then I'm going to just try and import all of the VS Code Marketplace extensions because I do use a lot of VS Code Marketplace extensions. I want to say around 30 or so is I have, oh geez, I just talked about like gremlins and, and other little uh, extensions that just kind of make my life a lot easier. So that's that's kind of what I wanted to try out. Let's just install code. Everything else looks good. Let's hit continue. <laughs> Someone's gonna curse you out of the title. <laughs> uh, you're using Windows too much these days. Probably, you know. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. It is true, though. It is true what Mr. ABDR says. I am using Windows an awful lot these days. Have I given up on Linux? I don't know. Time will tell. What are the differences between VS Codium and VS Code? Is it just data collection? Yeah, there's a lot more tele uh, telemetry with VS Code. VS Codium's pretty much like VS Code without the telemetry. The one issue I've had with VS Codium in the past is sometimes it breaks and you don't have access to the marketplace. Every once in a while, it uh, it can be an issue. So anyways, just, just my, my thoughts. All righty. Bam. Cursor. Let's uh, get this thing going. In your PowerShell profile, you have aliases for your GitHub. How I'm able to change it from Documents GitHub to C GitHub. Ah, oh, sure, we can go through that gaming. We'll pull it up in Cursor and see what Cursor has to, has in store. Can it edit that document? Um, let's let's see. Uh, let's let's first just do <laughs> VS Code Pets still installed on this computer. That's pretty funny. Anyways. Uh, da, da, da. While we're here, I was like, I better just do I have there we go. Origin. Want to make sure I'm on the right test branch there. Power show profile. Whoa, been a while since I updated this one. Uh, let's go in PowerShell profile. Let's pull up this entire project. 
and update it live on stream using cursor and see if cursor's worth anything. And we could even do some chat GPT built into it and see if it does any better in Copilot. It's a pretty low bar to get over though, to be honest with you. Uh, Copilot sucks so bad. Let's see, sign into GitHub. Okay. Oh, jeez. Just dox myself. Great. Wouldn't be the first time. Won't be the last. All right. So we got our, our profile. Now you want to change this. Yeah, Copilot's just clippy wearing a new hat. That's true. Copilot does a good job of predictive text, though. I will say that much. So here is the pro uh, power profile here. And let's go through. You want GitHub. We did make an alias for GitHub. I think it's just alias G. Um, we have Gcom for just uh, GitHub commit and then lazy G. <laughs> Always a good day when I joined the stream and Chris doxed himself. Uh, it's, it's pretty much just like every other stream, isn't it, Ashlyn? Oh, man. <laughs> um don't run uh function get dash pub ip on stream that would not be good either uh, <laughs> uh let's see uh we should see function g or i made him just may have done an alias of it maybe i didn't did i not let's see oh here it is so right here function g set location home documents github so then when you're uh let's launch into a terminal and from terminal you go g and it launches into document github so this is the profile and you can actually echo a profile this is where the profile is stored on your system depending on what you're doing now there is difference between powershell and powershell core so powershell core looks a little different this is like the older powershell and if you do like an echo profile over here you'll notice this one's a little different look at uh, your home folder windows powershell all like that and if you look over here you got documents powershell kind of weird right how you have core and this it's just microsoft not standardizing things again and them going hey these two powershells are not created equal but also an important thing most people mix these up and think they are equal typically you want powershell 7 here um that's the one i like to use but if you do find yourself in the older PowerShell, just know there's certain functions that might not be available that are available on PowerShell 7. Um, I, I forget which one's called PowerShell Core as the naming scheme in Microsoft never makes any sense to me, but it's set location for GitHub. Uh, and if we look on our cursor application, it's this one, function G, and then it sets the location set location is a powershell command think of it like cd in linux or uh change directory it, even cmd you know uh think of it as cd from cmd as well for for other people that are familiar with more command prompt than powershell yeah you could drop and try poe it has specific bots like lt genius etc i know uh intellij also has a pretty extensive bot list as well that's pretty good there's a lot of different stuff coming into the space to help programmers out which is kind of cool um but i'm trying to think what else do we have in here was there anything i needed to change in this powershell that uh no i think I, most of it's is about what i want um powershell cobalt it's kind of an interesting one here i think my oh my posh is set up a little incorrectly but i think it's fine we can go reload profile and see what we get let's just go reload uh profile yeah it's it's fine i want to change it to to see github yeah so that's that's all you need to do just replace the home uh, replace the dollar sign home, everything with just C colon backslash GitHub. You got to get rid of the home as well. So let, let's say you want to do this change. Uh, do we close that? You leave it to me to always close stuff. Let's pin that to start menu. Open it up. So let's say you want to make that change to uh, this path. 
So where it says set location, dollar sign home, and it's in the C drive root, it'll look like this instead. So this right here is what your profile, your modified profile would look like. Obviously, I don't want to do that because my GitHub's in the home documents GitHub folder, but uh, you can set up aliases. So if let's say you want to do like function C or uh, make new functions, obviously don't overwrite existing ones. That would be uh, no bueno. So you can add little shortcuts and you can see a lot of my shortcuts here is specifically taking Linux and then kind of converting it to a PowerShell type of thing. So anytime I'm like trying to do something, I'm like, God bless. I can't, I can't do this or it's just such a convoluted mess in PowerShell, like finding a file or unzipping a file. It just gets kind of ridiculous, the syntax. I'd like to do a function to make it, hey, this this will do well. Uh, like this IX, uh, use an IXIO, RIP, actually. I can probably remove that. Did that ever come back? I don't think it did. Uh, I, I covered this in a past stream. IXIO, it was a clipboard, but... Oh, sad face. It is gone. I got to find a new paste website. IXIO was amazing, though. I loved it. Um, anyways, uh, touch would just write out a file. The DF, you know, the basic Linux commands, converting them over into PowerShell. So anytime I run into something, I'm like, hey, I need this command. Let me find the PowerShell equivalent, and then I usually do a little conversion because the, the Linux commands just make way more sense, and they're usually way, way less characters, so just for efficiency. And that's my PowerShell profile in a nutshell. Um, you need to reload the profile. You might do like a reload-profile like that, and it should reload the profile. Uh, and make sure you're editing the proper profile. You could also do like a Vim dollar sign profile uh, or whatever editor you could do notepad right and then do the profile uh, I'm gonna just pull it up in vim now you can see it all right here and let's say you want to go over to uh, github you can see this function right here let's say you want to change it you change it here and then you would write it out and then do a reload profile and then you'd have the new alias that would assign to the proper proper place making you more efficient uh, yeah, NeoVim. So NeoVim's there. Um, I, I probably need to do the next stream's going to be like, forget NeoVim, use Helix. <laughs> I like exploring all the new new programs, the new hotness that comes out and all the different stuff. Yeah, and, and like most people don't want NeoVim, especially Windows users probably will not jive. So most people, it'll look like this. Notepad profile. Uh, did no notepad stupid they don't know where it's at um notepad is there a certain syntax to open no okay maybe it's notepad and it can't convert from a system variable that would be stupid but it is yeah that's what it is ah microsoft <laughs> microsoft's program is not compatible with with variables apparently um it's, it's but that that's nothing i can fix that's just microsoft program sucking on that uh that's the conversion though yeah <laughs> good enough you can always echo like if you need a, a variable like another real common variables like emv uh user profile it shows you your home folder. You can also do like uh, env colon, and then you can kind of flip through and find common variables that might be like, hey, where's the home drive? Well, that's in C. That might be another one you might use. And let's say you go through, but you can use tab complete on a lot of these system variables to kind of find one. They'd be like, oh, that's interesting. I can, I can edit that or change it or use these variables in a PowerShell script. Just be careful when it comes to uh, CMD scripts because a lot of times they will not properly convert. Old programs like Notepad sometimes can't convert, which is weird that they have issues, but I've never run into like an actual good program. You know, nobody really uses Notepad. Uh, I just wanted to 
show that for a layman that that might still use notepad i mean honestly most i'd say most layman's don't even use notepad they probably use like notepad plus plus which i remember using that and that's not a terrible program it just has an awful interface and looks like garbage no hate though i used it for a long time and uh let me see what else we got yeah i could use code for my notepad yeah notepad's pretty bad uh vs code's not bad like i said i've used vs code a lot uh i do find it a little bit bulky for doing these kinds of edits and it's really slow so whenever i'm editing those things that's when like neovim is i contradict myself constantly it's like the the one thing um depending on the tool things just make sense to me like if it's a single file that i'm editing neovim every time almost so if it's like a profile i'm gonna be editing a neovim because it's just super fast for me but if it's like a massive project with a whole bunch of different files and subfolders and i'm gonna be constantly needing the extra extensions and other things on it i you know i lean towards vs code or now i guess i'm gonna try cursor out as that's what we've been trying today uh, i'm kind of curious to see what all it can do in that regard let's open up a bigger project we can try when you till um the chat gpt4 integration with code is not the best as what i found dexy that's why i kind of found this project that does apparently a better job and i don't know i don't know if that's true or not i gotta probably use it uh, and kind of be in it a lot before i'm like hey is there any issues with this or that um so i don't know i don't know all of that like i said it, we're gonna have to kind of like just flip through and see what we have here we still have vs pets which is great that's an essential needed thing for any code editor of course uh, we have full VS Code Marketplace, which is great. I still have Copilot for that, and we should have a uh, add-in for the new Chat GPT. But I don't know. This is Copilot Chat, but there's also I don't know how you would use the new new one. So like, let's say you come here, you got Copilot, but there's also some kind of built-in one that i wanted to kind of tinker around with where would that be maybe i gotta watch a how-to article or there's got to be a white paper on this thing let's go show all commands yeah it, it's it's a uh, called cursor and it's supposed to integrate tightly with like chat gpt in theory but how true is that? I don't know. I do like its default layout. It does feel good so far, but I can't tell you any difference between VS Code and, and this right now, except maybe the icon layout right here instead of being a sidebar, it's a top bar, which to be honest with you, I kind of prefer. But what else do we have? Yeah, most of this is what I use in, in here. I probably would use... I don't really use git lens i should but i don't could use like that how many how many can we put up there what's the git oh yeah okay so it does huh let me let me sign in real fast curious to see what happens hmm <laughs> okay yeah that's just the github chat if it doesn't have it it just kind of ends it from there so we can only put three on the screen source control i don't think i will use that much let's unpin that search i will extensions probably run and debug i really don't use very much probably like chat or powershell probably but even powershell i kind of like to run in a separate window just for space so yeah we'll leave it leave it like that for now do we have any prs i don't know let's check let's just check old github what do we have oh i still need to do that one god bless what was it somebody mentioned it on stream and i wanted to do it it was it was like a terminal for github profiles what was it called oh i think i made it as a star 
Let's let's do that real fast. The important things first. Yeah, GitHub README terminal. This is what I wanted. Retro vibes, boot sequence. I'm sorry, guys. This is this takes priority over everything. We absolutely need this. All right, update README, then usage. Now I'm gonna have to host this somewhere, maybe. I don't know. Well, is this is just to build the GIF, and then we upload it? Possibly. Interesting. So then you create your Tommel, and then you have, huh? Probably would do one dark or Nord. You know me, I love my Nord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. King Root mentioned it. <laughs> I know someone from chat mentioned it. I started, and I was like, hey. <laughs> uh let's see optional api keys must be present in the env or declared as environment github token and the api key might be able to do that if we're messing around with the token i probably won't do that on stream <laughs> but it does look optional i wonder if i could set this up as a, a github action that'll rerun every day i feel like that would be the way to go about this Ah, that might be something I play with offline then. Yeah, you can install a pip x and then just create the GIF, I want to say. Let's try it real fast. Let's just try it with base configuration, see if we can't just pull my my stuff in without like doing any um anything. Uh let's see Python problems. I don't know what it is. I always have problems running Python and Windows. It's just so much easier with like a Linux Linux instance. Let's just try that. All right. Um, we probably could just do pip x here. Let's see, what was the install command? Yeah, here's the pip, but I wanna say pip x has, probably has the package. Let's just try pip x install upgrade and then just see if that gives us what we need that's not pip but i think we can do pip x here oh ah, okay maybe i didn't um as far as discord bots i like to host those on vps's that are always have a hundred percent uptime uh languages it just depends if you want to use like a framework i'd probably recommend like Redbot. You get, but the problem is you do have to keep up with them and, and update as needed. All right. So we got that. Uh, pip X. Uh, let's just try install and then GitHub readme terminal. The thing I like about pip X instead of using regular pip is it seems to just install it system wide without having to do like a specific uh, environment. Um... No apps associated with GitHub readme terminal. Try this again with include depths. Okay, let's try to include the dependencies. Okay, that seemed to work. Uh, let's just change our bash RC to include uh, this. Man, I think I got to pimp out my little WSL here. This is kind of embarrassing. Do we already have path somewhere in here? No, we don't. Uh, let's just, we'll go to the end. Let's just do an export of path equals, um, path equals path colon. And we'll do like a control shift V. I think that'll work. Let's source bash RC. Okay. Hmm. Let's just clone. I've already done this before. I don't... Uh, brain's not working quite right today. It's been an issue all week. You know, we all have our off weeks. This is mine. Uh, I think it was just my bash was the project name. Yeah, let's just go my bash. Let's just go setup.sh. All right. Yes. Cool. Uh, let's source, source bash RC, perfect. 
Um, Echo Path. <laughs> My path's a little ridiculous, but I'm pretty sure we got that user bin file or uh, home bin file. Yeah. Dot local bin. I think we have that now. What was the... It was Titus dot local bin. Yeah. Titus local bin. Perfect. I know. Don't look at my path. It's a little ugly, but... Oh, did I mistype? Did I put like a colon or something? Uh, well, it's fixed now. <laughs> uh, thanks for the tier one there, Ashlyn. Oh, I used a semicolon instead of a colon. Ah, uh, that figures. Anyways, I wanted to pip out my profile anyways. It, it wins. Now, what was the GitHub bin file? Oh, I didn't install Zoxide. Got to get that going, too. Um, This was the GitHub readme and stuff, so... What was the use case here? So we already have the, all the installation. For the use case, we'd want to go into .config, go gif os, inside the toml files as environment settings. So let's go in there. .config. Let's go into the toml files, uh, or, uh, oh, those don't exist, right? GIF OS is what it's called. And then what we'll do is grab the toml file, which is GIF OS toml. And then there's ANSI. There's got to be like some kind of generator of the config files. Maybe not. Interesting. Uh, does it work on Bash on Windows? Um, well, I'm on Windows. Uh, do you talking? This is Bash and WSL. Not quite the same. I don't think I've ever. Is, can you run Bash from PowerShell? Oh, yes, it does work. <laughs> oh, you know, I never even tried to run Bash from PowerShell. That's the interesting. Uh, huh. It gives me some ideas. This is oh my posh. And then we got the special one. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay, Bash is WSL. It just launches an interest. In that. That's what I thought. I was like, oh, I didn't know there's been a native Bash. There isn't. That, that, that makes perfect sense. All right. Let's, I guess, build these files manually. That's what I'm thinking. Um... And what do we have? I guess we'll just let's just copy the default config file. Um, put that in. What was the other one? Anzi escape colors terminal. I wonder if let's just grab Nord probably though. No, that's not it. Is there? Okay, here's the color scheme. I have a feeling we don't need that. Do we even need the environmental variables? Maybe. I'd probably go cat pooching and switch this up. We can do it manually while we do the build. So what this look like is just Nord for this scheme. I'm going to leave those because I don't think we're going to need anything like that. So we just export that environment. We could always do like a hacky way with toss it in like ETC environment, but I don't think we'll go that far. I want to just do a quick run through and just test it and see if this works. Uh, GitHub show and tell. So how do you run it now? This is the configuration. Here is a basic demonstration. You import GIF OS T G O F S. Okay, huh, this looks like just, is that Python? And then you're just running this script and then it spits out a GIF. I feel like that's what's happening here. Looking at the code, could be wrong. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Documentation's a little lacking, but it's okay. It's a cool project. Heck, let's give it a whirl. Um, let's just go gifos.py, maybe? Let's see if there's already a command there. Let's try gif. 
gift top nm what is gift top mm huh no i don't know what that binary is and no command i think we just run the pi script then let's go gif os dot py all right let's try that we'll just build it like this probably like uh do like an execute privilege i don't know i'm just throwing crap at the wall right now so please feel free to correct me oh uh, okay thank you Faye. so here's his example main.py oh that's cool i wonder if he's he's got to be doing like a github action here with this as well i like his setup but if we look at the readme i think this will also do what that one is just a little bit less so let's kind of tinker with this and see what we want to do because i i, I get it he, he you're building this gif file that's going to get outputted and I think we could set up like a GitHub action to do this exact same thing. He's doing a lot of extra stuff with his GIF image. And he's using Python to build the GIF and then insert it into the profile. I know this is supposed to be a cursor stream, but uh, yeah, we're working in terminal. And I ain't using I ain't using a GUI editor when I'm in terminal. That's for that's for special people. <laughs> All right, uh, let's go Python. Um, and can we just do gif os pi? Uh, Python not found. Did you mean maybe Python 3 then, right? I don't know. I, I, I don't use Python. Okay. File line 15 invalid syntax. Oh, we got syntax there. All right. Now let's try cursor. <laughs> uh, where is this even located on the PC? I wonder. I think it's in like a C MNT directory. What is the PWD? Let's just give us the full path. Home Titus. But if we look at Linux, yeah, we should be able to pull into here. And then I think it was under, we put the pi file git gif os. And then we got the pi right here. Let's open with, and let's open with cursor. We'll just do just once because we don't know if it's worth anything. Now let's see what it finds. It says cursor not separated. Oh, oops. There's an F right there. We have a not defined variable. That's a warning though. Shouldn't be anything. These are just C spell errors, which is nothing. So that's, that's what did it. Now save all. Let's go ahead and do toggle autosave. I'm kind of a big stickler for autosave anyways let's close that guy out now let's run it again i think i just had f at the end to mess things up okay g i o f not defined did you mean gif oh i did g i o f s this is actually gif os yeah that i i must have fat fingered that Okay, partially initialized module GIF OS has no attribute terminal, most likely due to circular input. Yeah, the topic's just a mild suggestion. That's what I'm kind of doing now. Uh, so, did this make anything? Account name, username, file name, output. So, this didn't make anything, no. Let's try to use the terminal built into here and do a run through as it as well. Now, does it, it says this has GPT? Does it though? Hmm. So here's terminal ports output. So if let's say we do like a run. What if we start debugging Python file? Select Python interpreter. Can we install Python? Oh, Lord. All right, sure. Install it from the store. Feels dirty, but let's try it. Okay, Dev Panda sent me something. Oh, no. All right, that's fine. 
So we got Python. So I'll select interpreter. Python. Sure. Could not be resolved. Can we just say, here, we'll try Copilot. Fix this. Oh, <laughs> uh, it is installed through pip, pip, pip X. That could be the issue as well. Yeah. And honestly, we're running through an interpreter on Windows now, and we didn't install it through Windows. So that also would be an issue. Uh, so that's why this couldn't be resolved. Let's go to terminal. Do we have like Python? Python. Okay, that does seem like it's there and we might need to just relaunch this too let's just kill this uh terminal session let's go new terminal we'll just kill that old one yeah whatever huh it's like a little baby deer walking for the first time trying to use terminal through here ah cringe moment um debug with ai okay debug with ai that's that's the first thing i've seen that i don't normally see in that so let's see incomplete python environment setup that makes sense so usually if i'm installing python what i like to do is i actually like to use chocolatey chocolatey does a great job with uh system environment so what's the error is in layman's terms here is the path uh, obviously WSL that's a whole different thing it just has the path Linux just makes this super easy that's why most programmers don't use Windows a lot of them use like Mac or Linux because of the Unix structure it just from a programming standpoint just is so much easier than Windows uh, but Windows can be used so let's show that so let's go sysdm.cpl and we're gonna go to advanced we're gonna go to environment variables and then here is where the environment variables are. We do have a path section here. And let's just see. These are all the things that are getting done. If we hit edit, let's look. We do have a C Python 311 specified. What is in C Python 311? Is that even a that is valid? And there is there for that. We also have some other Pythons there too, which gives me some pause. Let's look at that because one Python's probably Microsoft Store, one's probably the binary from Chocolatey. Hell, one might be from Scoop, I don't know. And how they install on your Windows system all needs different paths if you're going to go that route. Again, this is why Linux is just infinitely better when dealing with this type of thing or just using WSL inside of Windows which is essentially using Linux is, is infinitely better, but needless to say, let, I would still kind of want it to work and I'm sure we can get it to work. Yeah, we can try that. Let's try to run that in. Somebody mentioned in chat too. What we can do is just go and do our WSL instance. So I really don't want to mess with path and all that crap. It's just kind of sucks. Uh, let's try to do like a uh, Python, Python, let's go three and let's do a GIF OS Pi. Partially initialized module GIF OS has no attribute terminal, most likely due to circular import. That was the main problem we have was an attribute error when running this Python script. So what does that mean? I don't know. Let's try uh, this guy's file, and then we'll modify it and see if it still gives us the same error. I'm just kind of curious. All right. Uh, I think I actually just cleared out my path. Um, what did I do with that? Let's copy the raw file. Okay. What does this look like? Invalid syntax in line one. Okay probably need to do like face suggested with the virtual environment all right let's try python dash m what was it v and v test uh oh python command python is from python is 
You know, I'm just going to install this because I hate typing out Python 3. I think this is just like an alias, but whatever. Uh, what, what if we just do it? Huh. And the Python, Python 3 did not work. Hmm. Uh, we're having a squirrel moment here. Okay, never mind. It did work. Cool. So now we got the VMV test. Now we should be able to just uh, activate that. Uh, what is it? VNV bin activate. Oh, did we have a folder that was created? Let's see. Um, this is not exactly how I wanted to do it, but whatever. It gets us there. Uh, activate. Do I need to make this executable? I don't think so. Please don't do anything I'm doing here. I'm just punching stuff at the wall. It's fine. Oh, source VNV activate. Source it, don't run it. <laughs> Oops. Uh, all right. So you'd go source test, bin, activate. Then you're in the test environment. Now you can run it. Okay. So this, you, you go pip, install, and then uh, the readme. Let's, let's rerun this. Sorry, Python noob here, running through. Never done Python before in my life. Well, that's not entirely true. But I've forgotten everything. So that's what we're going over. Um, uh, let's go here. Yeah, right, perfect. I did have an extra line there. That was an extra fat finger copy. I don't think it matters, though. Um, so we got that. Now we have the modules. We're in the virtual environment. I think we can go ahead and run that Python file, see what we get. Ooh, Python 3 VNV, if I recall. It might, maybe. Let's let's give it a whirl. If we have a problem, we can go back. I think we grab that dependency. Maybe. I don't know. <sighs> hmm. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I like new Lua a lot better too, but that's because I know Lua. That's the thing. I think if you take, talk to like a Python dev, they'd be like, ah, Python's great. You can do anything in Python. Whether it's efficient or not, that might be a different story. But Python can pretty much do anything. Uh, all right. So now we have this here, and we're in the virtual environment. Can we just run the Python file, or do we still have to run Python? I mean, I think... Does that work? Maybe. Maybe not. Yeah. Yeah. Run it with Python. Okay. Let's just do Python. And then GIF. That says invalid syntax. Yeah. It seemed like it was almost running when I just did a forward slash uh, Python OS pi. But alas, no go. Let's use the example from the readme. I agree. So let's grab the TOML file. GIF OS settings. Wait, no. This, this was the example right here. The basic demonstration. So, let's go gif .py. Um, let's go v, g, mm, the end. And let's paste that. All right. And then if we do like a gif os again. I just want to see. I know that's not how you run it though. It's just going to not do anything. From date time has no space, so invalid syntax. Ah, uh, gotcha. So let's try Python and then do gif os pi. The F got returned there again. Why do I keep doing that? Weird. You'd think I wouldn't, but oh well. All right. Name GIOS not defined. Did you mean gif os? Um, maybe. I don't know. It feels like the readme file or the example isn't complete, right? Maybe not. So we got the T, GIOF. I imagine this would be, should be this, right? I mean, me and my rudimentary puny brain. That looks about right to me. Let's just change this. Um, we don't. It needs github token in dot env or as an environment variable yeah yeah um 
I, I think we're still going to run into the dot terminals like a recursive error kind of BS, but we can try it again. Yeah, circular import, whatever the F that means. Doesn't know how to interpret the first line there. I think we'd still run into the syntax error. We, I mean, we can edit this. I, like I said, I think this project's really rough around the edges. Reminds me of like a project I'd throw up. I think he got it working and then he just kind of tossed it up without proper documentation. That's kind of where I'm at with this. Let's see if there's like a, there's the sample. There's no real docs. It's very cool though. I might tinker again with this. I would, I, I just wanted to try basic usage here just to see if I could get some kind of output, but um, might have to wait for proper documentation. I don't know. Very neat though. Let's go here. Showcase your unique profile. Has anybody done it? Oh, this guy did it. Let's see what his looks like. Oh, that's pretty cool. Oh, wow. He did a little login. GH fetch. I probably would speed up the typing, as I don't think very many people are going to wait here and have all this printed out for you. It's cool, though. A little cow sale. All right. An interesting GIF. Anywho. Next series, the perfect WSL setup. I think, Patrick, you're on to something there. I think you're definitely on to something there. Oh, the GitHub token. I think, honestly, though, it's something with Terminal based on that. Based on what I'm seeing from here. There's no attribute for Terminal. And I think that's really what's stopping this as well. There might be some other issues, too. Honestly, I probably would just boot into Linux and try this out. I, I hate doing this in WSL because I don't want to say, hey, it's it could be a WSL error. It could be a lot of different things as well. WSL Titus win soon, very soon, apparently. So all I do is I'm in just Linux nonstop these days. All right. Uh, where's it importing GIF OS? I think we did the install of GIF OS using the pip command earlier in the stream. So that's uh, the idea behind it. Again, I'm no programmer of Python. So I don't know. You have the same terminal issue with the short example. Okay. Yeah, I think some of it's uh, documentation. I, like I said, we could look at some of the examples that other people have put together, probably piece together something. And get it going but i don't really care it's more of a fun project i wish i could use linux for a living windows makes me want to die every day mm. eh, there's there's a lot of cool stuff out there but yeah so i have lived in linux but a lot of times um i always come back to windows for this and that there's always something that brings me back it's, it's what I know, and honestly, uh, a lot of my professional certs and, and a lot of my expertise all come from Windows, and my day job, pretty much everything's still Windows. So that's that's why I still have quite a bit of Windows. And honestly, uh, it just depends on what I'm doing that day. Sometimes it makes me angry, sometimes just mildly frustrated. But I guess you could say the same. So there's been days where that's true for Linux as well. Let's see. We got pull requests. We got uh, open, choose alternate scratch. We got tweaks. We got sci win to development. Uh, you know, it's been a while since I've seen. Uh, did people still use that? I thought everyone switched to WSL. Remove nano from applications. That's a someone added nano. We we had a we had an infiltration of a Linux fanboy into Windows utility. He added Dolphin and Nano and a bunch of other crap. Uh, how to make Windows users pissed off at you? Well, that's a good way to do it. Ah oh, man, just in a day. This is this is only this is only a day's worth of PRs. Two days worth of PRs, and we already have nine. Good night. All right, what do we have? Uh, let's just quickly go through here. Fox at PDF. Editor. Editor, okay. Like, do we care about that? Oh, there's an editor and a reader. 
Huh. I guess that's fine. Ah, editor requires a license. Reader does not. I did not know. Fox, it requires a reader? Wow. Oh, the module names comes from the file names. Oh, okay. Let's try it real fast. We were, so we were right there. Dang, did I just almost give up right at the finish line? That's funny. Uh, what do we got? What was it? Test. Uh, let's go config. GIFOS. All right. And let's just go test. Bin. Activate. Uh... Hi. All right. No. Maybe it's Python test bin activate? Or no, it was VMV. Yeah. This guy does not use Python very much. What am I doing? Source. That's what I was doing wrong. All right. <laughs> oh, idiot. <laughs> uh, let's move gifos.py to Titus.py. Oops. What? What happened? What did I do? Oh, I vimmed it. Jeez. Let me turn on my AC. Making mistakes. <clears throat> hey, at least you're pretty. Ah... <laughs> uh... All right. Uh, Python. Uh, what do we got? Expected new line. Okay, new error. That's cool. Import GIF OS. Import terminal. Toml decode error. Expect a new line or end of document after a statement. Line 26, column 27. Line 26. Do we need like a semicolon or something here? What, what am I missing? Okay, settings file. Vim settings. Uh, something wrong with the settings file. You see anything, any issue with that? Output? Uh, weird. Just added something at the end. Okay. 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 There we go. Then we just need the GitHub token. So can we... So from here, I wouldn't want to do a token, obviously, on stream for my terrible, terrible tendency to dox myself. I don't mind giving out like an IP or something because my systems are pretty secure here, relatively. And a token is a different thing. I don't, I don't screw around with that on stream. However... What I probably would do here, probably play with this a little bit offline, but instead of actually grabbing a token and putting it like a on a Docker container or WSL and rebuilding this manually, creating a GitHub action to auto builds this GIF file daily is probably the way to go here. Uh, that's that's the way I would uh, roll with it. Loop TJ, yeah. <laughs> hey GPT, read me a bedtime story with one of Chris Titus's GitHub tokens. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, I mean, what I'm saying is I'd probably fat finger at gaming. And what you can do, actually, if you do it through a GitHub action, which is how you'd want to do this anyways, because you don't want to be constantly rebuilding this file or setting a cron job to do it locally or anything like that. You'd want to do a GitHub action and then you can actually specify the GitHub token uh, environment variable to go ahead and pass through to that. And then the action will rebuild the GIF and put it in the file for you. And then you just say, hey, run this action and trigger it every 24 hours. And then your, your readme or your profile would get updated daily with that new hotness. Uh, so pretty cool. Pretty cool. I like it. That is weird, though. Weird that if you name it gifos.py, it would uh, error out like that. Just a weird Python bug. Thanks for tracking that down. Okay, well, I guess we we can go ahead and merge this. Let's approve and merge. Um, let's first. What is that? 
Can you do an elevated PowerShell prompt? Yes. Inside of uh, VS Code. I guess it doesn't matter. It would actually auto elevate, but still kind of interesting. Configure terminal settings. Okay. Just checking cursors integration, seeing how we do automated profile for Windows. Auto replies, confirm on kill. Never. I hate confirmation. Just kill it. Cursor blinking, cursor style. Enable bell. Ugh. No, don't show a warning. Okay. You can specify specific environments. Font family. It would be cool to use. You know, I don't really use the integrated terminal very much. Even in VS Code, I didn't. Uh, mainly because I just really liked the regular Windows terminal, but you know, all right, huh? All right, let's go new chat. Let's just change this to, Ooh, it's cursor fast. Let's just say change cursor to launch terminal with admin. You can change to launch terminal with, oh, look at that. Hey, a little AI actually does a pretty, well, you guys can't really see that, can you? Can we move this? Open AI chat over here. Yeah, okay, now you guys can see it. So you can actually do a little AI chat. Oh, that's neat, okay. You can do sudo g edit. Um, oh, wait, <laughs> this is gnome terminal. Ah, uh, that's funny. Okay, well, no. I mean the terminal embedded inside of cursor editor in Windows. Ah, okay. You can do a run as. That's a janky workaround. Yeah, we ain't doing that. All right, good to know. I, I, I thought that was the case. It was the case in VS Code as well. Uh, good to know. Yeah, this is pointless to me. Let's just uh, see what we got. All right, so we got the description of the pull request. We can just check it out. You can see the changes. Good. Now, what I want to do here is let's just do a build and then run the file. We'll do a compile and a run, just double checking it. You can see we're on loop TJ PR 1507. So we'll do a compile when you till. Now, most times I, in the past, I did not check this every single time for each pull request. But after getting burned on a couple pull requests, I'm like, all right, <laughs> we're compiling, running, and then, uh, checking each each individual commit so let's uh we've already checked it out that does look good so let's uh squash and merge this and then we're gonna switch back to the old branch i'm gonna try and do all this in the editor itself too just to see where this goes can i move this panel move it to the right maybe kind of want to put it over here i'm gonna make it the size of chat all right, squash and merge that. Yes. Uh, the reason why the compile, I don't really need to commit back. So let's say we go back to the main branch here, which we should be able to go back to here and then come over here. And then let's uh, go description, fix broken link and sync thing. Let's check this out and this is just nan zip that's the only change it looks like so we would check it out it's kind of tedious doing it this way little fixes like this probably don't need to be done this way but let's go over let's close that it says we're on main where are we though we're on the main branch. Okay. I don't know if I like this workflow. 
using everything inside like a VS Code GitHub pull request thing seems a little bit crazy to me, but you know, teach his own. So if we check this out, it's only doing that. Come over to here. We should be on Rock God PR 1508. Let's do a pile. We get till. Looks good. And this one was just fixing Nanzip to redirect the GitHub, which Nanzip I think is over here. And that's the change. Kind of tedious, but I don't know. How many people in chat actually manage pull requests and everything in VS Code? Oh, and this cursor, cursor VS Code, I, I mean, they're interchangeable for for now. I'm not sure. I'm not sold on the whole AI thing just yet. As um, it is nice, but I don't know. I don't know. Let's squash and merge this. I think I need to run it for a while. Uh, the cursor is is Cascada. That's a nerd font, Cascada. Uh, Cascada code, I want to say. I think I probably need to install on this system again. I just haven't yet. I do like to use Meslo, uh, Meslo LGS for all my Linux installs. It's a nerd font as well, though. Almost every single thing is always a nerd font. I really, really like them. All right, added Megasync. They have an application. Mega. Do people use Mega? I don't know. I remember the guy got arrested, right? The guy that ran Mega? How reputable is that? This one. Uh, I kind of want to track down whoever did this commit with the Nano Edition. Because whoever originally did this commit should be banned from the project. It says I added it. <laughs> I did not add that. I would never add Nano. Uh, lordy. But yeah. That's that's why we we will just merge this. We don't need to test it. Uh, so for this one for the nano, let's just pull that up. This is going into the test branch patch. Let's just merge using squash and merge. Um, now I want to say we should probably do like an approval first and just approve the changes, and then squash and merge. I don't know. As I use this more, I kind of like doing it in the application, although I could see this backfiring as it's a little bit easier. But I don't know. Could be good. Uh, I don't think I'm going to just go through each one of these application ones. We'll see. We'll see what the changes are. This one's uh, Sajwin open source. This, I you know, like I said, I, never, I don't know. I, I totally butchered that name, but... Uh, I don't know if anybody uses this much anymore. I don't know if it's even worth adding with WSL around. Uh, magics. Yeah. Tweaks and feature tab cleanup. Okay, here's something interesting. This is the feature content features. Is this from... This is from OG FRM. Show me this. This one looks interesting. So remove tweaks and features items from input XML file. Uh, add context and descriptions for tweaks.json and feature.json files. I like both these changes for universal. Add types to items like button, toggle, combo box, automate it, the input XAML file. Change the main PS1 and add not just application items, but also tweaks and features to the input.xaml file. In application JSON, uh, WPF OP auto clicker has a panel as five. This is why the original version does not show my version. We'll create a six column just for that. If you change it to four application tab will be reduced to five column. Interesting. Okay. Let's take a peek through the code. These are the changes. We're adding extra descriptions into the WPF feature. And all these guys, type 200, type 300 and fix. The order is kind of weird with the, what is it, the hexadecimal? I don't know what the logic is behind that. Let's keep diving. Ah, 
this order is kind of strange. Don't necessarily like the implementation of that. Yeah, let's see what else has changed. Disable telemetry order. Okay. We're just adding it to all the tweaks. Hmm. Run disk cleanup. Disable UAC. Disable temporary files. Game DVR. Okay. Bing search. Getting deleted, it looks like. Or maybe you changed it into here. Yeah, I put it in here for the toggle. I don't hate it. I just, I don't know. I'm a little apprehensive of this formatting. There has to be a reason why he did it this way. Uh, let's take a look at the changes to the main. We have the get tab XAML. Actually, not that much uh, lines are changing here. Grid definitions. Stack panel checkbox. Okay, features. Nothing else there. And then we have the input XAML here, where, again, it's just taking out all these stack grids. A lot more uh, deletion, and then it just pulls in the JSON and puts it in. And I want to say, when he's doing this, there's got to be, be a reason for that order. Just don't know it. All right. And this is just the compile. I don't know what do you guys think on this one it's a very cool tweak i like it but it could be very convoluted as far as the ordering system goes with how it looks it looks like a hexadecimal is the best way to put it with an underscore after it in the json i think for standardization it'd be good but I, the only reason i'm apprehensive of that is for a layman i think that would get really weird for adding things so let, let's check it out, see what we get. I'm kind of curious. Uh, it says I have some local ch changes. Um, let's just, let's just go back to the test branch. Pull commits, yeah, let's, from and to, uh, what, what are the local, let's double check this. Looks like we just have bees, but we have this win util change. Kind of curious. Let's do it. The win util is going to get overwritten anyways by GitHub Actions. Let's do it in app. Please clean your repository working tree before checkout. Okay. All right, fair. Let's try it one more time. Yeah, it's not gonna allow it. That's funny. Anyways, what we can do is just go, you know what? Discard changes here. And then we just pull. You could do a git stash. I just don't know how to do that in app with like a VS Code type setup. Yeah, I, you totally can roll back if if don't like it. Um the thing is so you just clean out your, your tree, pull the thing, check out the branch. So now we're in the checked out branch with all these changes. The first thing I do with a checked out branch is close this guy. You can see we're on the checked out branch, PR 1522. Then what we do is a comp compile. This redoes any changes in the win util. What happens sometimes people will commit to the other things, but they won't compile the win util, which is fine because that makes the PR way easier. But um, the main issue with that is. Uh, a lot of times when I test these out, if if you're lazy and you forget to compile it, the win util might be running two or three versions back, and then it could be a bad PR, and then whenever it gets uploaded to GitHub, the action runs, builds a new win util, and then you run into problems. Uh, which is kind of funny. Okay. OP clicker is over here. It squashed and pushed pushed a new one on this interesting okay that seems to work let's just clean our uh, temporary files real fast see what that looks like run did not seem to run okay why is disable ipv6 down here as well that's buggy all right let's run disk cleanup 
Okay, that's not working. Huh. I like the idea behind this. We just gotta fix a few things. God, moving all this over. <sighs> hmm. Ashlyn, you dirty nano user. Vim is superior in every single way. I will die on this hill. <laughs> Emacs, sure. Org mode's pretty cool. The, the funny thing is most people are complaining about... The thing Emacs and Vim users can all agree on is nano sucks. Right? Nano is awful. Any NeoVim, Vim user, Helix, Emacs, all of those users will just monumentally agree with the one thing. Nano is just awful and a peasant's tool. <laughs> no! No! You, you're converting people in chat there, Ashlyn. I see you. Nano is the devil. <laughs> I use micro. Oh. Y'all are killing me. Y'all are killing me. Okay. Uh, let's look at this feature set. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's look at disable IPV real fast. So we have the feature over here. Disable IP. No. Must be in the tweaks JSON. So disable IPv6. So where did this go wrong? So we got panel. Ah, uh, see, there is no order button here so let's let's pretend like i understand this order thing and instead of 30 let's go 31 so it would be enable and then disable let's do a recompile see what that looks like then when you go to tweaks yeah that's not bad is there any other problems let's go here install features Okay. We'll reset the network. Okay. Win get reinstall. See if that works. Okay. Yeah. Legacy panels. Power panel. Okay. Looks good. User accounts. Nice. Updates. Micro win. All right. No, I think this is actually a good commit. Just a couple little things there, but after messing with the tweaks on the JSON, the order thing I wish was done a little differently, but it's something it's so small. I really do enjoy that uh, that change. Uh, let's just update that. We'll push that to OGFM. Is there anything else? What happened with your website's overhaul? Lord, man. I got so much stuff going on i just never never went and did it yeah the one so the one thing about nano like when it comes to nano and vim you got to look at your use case most people that are in like a gui like windows users they're not going to be using vim or, or a terminal based text editor almost at all so it's not really a big deal most people just use like vs code or whatever it is um it's just how it is or intellij probably but like, let's say you're logging into a server. I could never use Nano in a server ever again. After learning like retrieve, just just one function from Vim. One, learn how to edit, exit Vim. <laughs> learn how to save a file in Vim and then learn retrieve. Once you learn retrieve, let's say you need to retrieve a UUID for an FS, uh, you know, FS tab for a hard drive. Think about trying to do that in Nano. You literally would have no way of copying and pasting that file in Nano. Uh, maybe you could do it through a Tmux type situation. I don't know. It's just so strange and, and weird. I've, I've seen Nano users literally write down UUIDs by hand and then type them back in. And I'm thinking to myself, wow, that's super inefficient where if you just did a retrieve of the BLK ID directly at the end of the FS tab, you could just copy paste, uh, or, or in this case, yank and paste that file directly into where you need it in the FS tab and you're done. That's where like Vim is like light years ahead of Nano. You're gonna save so much time. So that's where 
there where I'm like, man, I just I could never use it. Just just my thoughts. What is worse than nano or teams? Well, teams, teams is worse. Teams is way worse. Teams is always going to be the worst. Well, I don't know. I think Skype's worse than Teams. So let's not say Teams is the worst. Skype's the worst. Skype's is below Teams, which if you're using Skype in 2024, man. No. Just, I'm going to pretend like that doesn't exist. That hurts my brain. Anywho, uh, this actually looks like a really good commit. After flipping through here, uh, taking all those off the XAML file, putting them in, man, I dig it. I really dig it. All right, we're gonna prove that. And then we're gonna squash and merge this into, let's come into here. Do we, I thought we approved it. Let's refresh. Yeah, we updated the tweaks.json to include that ordering of the disable IPv6, and then we approved the code. So now we should be able to just merge merge it into the test branch. I kind of like this new workflow. It's not bad. It really isn't. All right, cool. Uh, anything else? Choosing alternate scratch path and busy. Lee Dow. I think I finally got it. All right, Lee's, Lee's working on learning Skit, uh, GitHub. He, he made a couple bad commits, but you know, we all got to start somewhere. Um, found a bug in the compile.ps1 when they move more than one file with the same function is causing havoc. Okay. Well, let's see what he's changing here. We got an invoke scratch dialogue. All right. He's adding a function. Uh, using a variable assign that is not being utilized anywhere in the code. Are you copy pasting? Are you using old chat GPT on me? I don't know. Usually when I see something like this, I'm like, oh, that might be a, you remember the days of stack overflow copy paste? That's usually what happens when you run into a brand new function with declared variables that aren't used anywhere. Maybe it is used somewhere else in the, but I don't know. Let's see. What else we got? Uh, Microwind Scratch BT. We're adding a new Scratch dialog. And we have this, where we're doing a busy message when it is grabbing the ISO. I do like the idea behind this PR, by the way. Um, let's check it out. I think this looks goodish. <laughs> uh other than the, the, that that which are just like hey that's funny and honestly we could just kill this frankly let's see what I, well let's just run it i guess it doesn't matter dialogue show new folder button i don't think that's ever used anywhere in here it might be used in the main i don't think it is though let's just see if that's anywhere in the project no it is not. Hmm. <laughs> Ashlyn, I'll use all versions of Opera. Uh, well, you know I'm having an off day if I accept a, a, a PR with adding Opera browser to, to the toolbox. My word. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's check out this PR. Uh, Lee looks like he think he, he think he did get it here. Let's check it out. All right, so we checked out old Lee's. Let's come on over here. We're going to close this bad boy down. We're going to do a compile. We're going to go win util. All right, we got our micro win. Interesting. All right. So then this is the scratch one. So let's say you want to put this in a scratch directory. Select folder. You can also use ISO directory for scratch directory. Huh, not a bad idea. Let's see what that does. We're going to grab an image file. Let's just get like 23H2, the latest, Win 11. Let's test that. Paste that into the scratch directory. Oh, and then make pro by default. I agree with that, King Root. Let's take a look. How many clips do we have of me bashing Opera GX do you think we have on the channel now? Probably 10. Might get a, like a cease and desist letter in the mail. 
That's how many we have. <laughs> Beat that horse to death. I like it. Okay. Does seem to be pushing the scratch directory over into this specialized directory, which is not bad. And then let's see if we can't make it. Let's just improve his PR while we're at it. Let's just go over to files. Let's just go... Um, Micro Win Helper is probably where it's at. And we're doing the filter. Index chosen. Sync MMS flavors selected value. Uh, this is going to be the flavors. The index. Let's see where that's at here. Image version. Index. Okay. So this is when it actually goes forward. So we probably need to trim this over or, or uh, not trim it, um, set the index value, select the value split zero. Let's see if we can't take our little GPT. All right, let's go and say, hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, pet, go. Ah. Add a new pet. Throw a chicken in there. Elsa the chicken. Go. All right. Uh, anyways, um, got distracted. Let's go to chat. Is this get? Oh, it's Copilot chat. Uh oh. No. We don't want that. We want the new, new source. What was this called? I don't. Know. I forgot the editor name. What was this called again? We want the new one. <laughs> Changing it. All right. Hmm. No. No. What the hell was this called again? Cursor is what this is called. All right. Cursor. Where, oh, where is your AI helper? Give me that. Give me the AI helper. Spawn a pet. Give me a rat. Or gray rat. We'll call him Shadow. Oh, okay. Sorry, I got sidetracked again. Um, mm, nope. Pull request. Debug. Ports. Comment graph. Open remote window. Mm -mm. Hmm. If I were AI and I was in here, let's just go more. Let's go AI. Chat. AI, no, chat, no, probably like code, uh, code, no, what would that be, search for text, uh, 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 and, hmm, Chris, are you still doing IT supply for the law firm, um, not really, I do, uh, I guess my official title is IT manager. Oh, support? Um, kind of. I have, uh, I do support for it. It's just, um, I have uh, a guy there that does most of the support these days because I'm only there like one day a week. So there are times where like, let's say he runs into something really complex or there's an existing system that maybe he's not familiar with. He might uh, reach out to me and on an off day. And of course, I'll, I'll help in that regard. That doesn't happen too much these days. Uh, so rarely we do that. Right now, they're doing a huge conversion. They're, they've expanded to three different cities and have three new offices. And I think we're finishing like the main office or the new HQ in the next month or so. So that's still going to be on my radar, like where we did like some cable runs and some other fine tuning. And obviously the move is going to be a pretty big deal. Um, after that, I don't know. We'll see what happens. We'll see if they want to keep me around. <laughs> if they do, I'm more than happy to go in one day a week or one day every two weeks. I don't care uh, until they say, hey, you know what, Titus, I don't think we need you anymore. If that happens, then, hey, it's been a fun ride. All right. Now, we got to set this index version. I don't know how Cursor does this. Let's see if there's a help. 
for editor playground run shit i had it pop up once for me when i was in a file and i can't remember what i did for it i probably should have cursor settings uh-huh there is an api key you can put in instead of doing like in a full-blown version if you want to just do it per cost that's interesting privacy mode advanced huh all right let's look this up cursor editor ai usage okay so it uses an ai code editor similar to vs code but it uses the open ai api to comprehend your local code base and provide answers on that how does it work though all right install the app give access access to okay provide basic settings with a repository we've done that access to open ai it shows it as a toggle on this right screen so it looks like a dock almost and the interface is just to the right so let's see there's got to be some window i'm missing here so it should be over here and terminal output um probably if we look at the view appearance editor layout maybe secondary sidebar uh okay let's just close this sidebar let's go new chat let's go change this to gpt4 say wait use at to show code files docs to the ai at files invoke micro in change index value to equal the windows pro version let's see what that does um let me break this out so you guys can see what it's doing as well yeah that's not gonna work <laughs> I, I like it. it's optimism and simplicity but <laughs> uh, that, that yeah um the actual value is it actually should be like index number four i want to say you change this to the numerical value that equals windows pro okay i know that that's what i want you to can you look through the value and select the one that specifies Windows Pro. Yeah, that's the correct fix, but what happens when the ISO changes and then that index value is now six or three? You should be doing an if statement or, or at the very least, maybe maybe a select. I don't I don't know the best programming form to do this. I just know what it should kind of look like. So the pro index, so you have Windows flavors. Where's that at? Windows Pro. So if we look through here and we go to MicroWin, let's select our ISO. Just want to verify what the mount point is in the actual text. Change line 140 to invoke BP get ISO to sync selected the index. That's where it's pulling the value from. Oh, it's not even pulling it from that value. Okay. So it would be Windows 11 Pro on this one, but if it's a Windows 10 ISO, it wouldn't pull this value. It would be index six in this regard, where the default value is index one, I wanna say. So we're not even the right value in this one. Um, let's see. Invoke WPF get ISO is the actual value. Invoke WPF get ISO. Uh, index ah. index ah it's set as zero actually so it would be five because even it adjusted it um get windows image sync selected index 
I guess since it's the official one, the easiest fix here would be just be like five. So let's do a compile. This will work, but then I kind of want to do it like an if statement, do like a for loop, look for the word pro in the image and then select that one. But then there's like pro in and then yeah, it can get kind of complex, but it should just be like, you know what? Anything's better than home at this point. <laughs> Let's see what we get. Is pro always index? It's actually index five, but it's listed as index six on here because it's not going to display the zero value. It's going to increment it by one. Yeah. See? Yep. That's a good fix. I think we'll leave that in. All right, cool. I for, I think it was King Root that asked for that. So, yeah, I, the proper way to do this is probably more regex. This is kind of a, hey, here's a nail, here's a hammer. It works. And frankly, it could select the wrong value, especially if the ISO is a special ISO, not an official Microsoft ISO that only had a couple values. Because if, let's say, it's an NT light ISO that only has one, well, that index, it's only going to have index zero. And if it tries to select index five, it's going to crash on a custom ISO. Um, You know, so I, I, that's why I'm kind of like, you probably should do a search. But how many people are using custom ISOs and micro win? That kind of defeats the purpose, right? So I think this is fine. Final answer. <laughs> Anywho, that's fun. Um... Can we move this? Oh, man, I don't like that over there. Oh, well, whatever. Have you updated Titus Pi yet? Uh, I got it right here for Raspberry Pi 5. Uh, next Tuesday. Let's do that next Tuesday stream. I've been in Windows too much lately. It's driving me a little mad. I think some Raspberry Pi action is definitely called for. So we'll do an update and rebuild Titus Pi in old raspberry pi 5 build it out in the new new system hmm okay that's good let's go ahead and uh do a commit for that we're gonna just discard win ui um change selected index to be pro Lee Dow is going to be like, what the hell's Titus doing? <laughs> Probably should have done it on its own PR, but whatever. It's all good. You know, when you do a refresh, you should see that. And we will merge this into the test branch. Great commit. Great PR. <laughs> Smiley face. Since he's, he submitted like... I think this is... His, six or seventh PR and I've denied all his other ones. Uh, but I do like this one. That's a solid PR by Lee and squash and merge. Perfect, man. I have all those orange pies. I absolutely have to absolutely have to do that. <laughs> I got it. I got to get those orange pies done. <laughs> They're so old at this point. I'm like, I'm just ready to write them off, but I'm, I'm not gonna, that's, that's pretty funny. Can we move this over here? How do I, uh, appearance, primary sidebar. Okay. Mm, dude. Uh, <laughs> all right. Primary sidebar. It's on the left. So we want it on the, no. Okay. Can we put two on the left? I wonder. I'm just still playing around with this side, top, bottom, hidden go hidden left bottom uh, let's go bottom see what that does okay view appearance primary sidebar i want to move that to the left okay yeah <laughs> above where the file tree is yeah it took me a minute finally got there although arguably um come back into here what do we got for all open so now we just have like a creative cloud cleaner tool Ooh, this is an interesting one get rid of adobe i'm always a fan of that add a new function for handling the cleaner tool we put it in the right branch at least 
adding an Adobe CC cleaner tool and pushing or pulling from here. Is it doing like a wget? How's he doing? No, he's doing a web request, pulling it out that way, that way, grabbing that start process. Dude, super simple. Very nice. Look at that. Who is this? This is a new committer too. Mr. Kin Hu. Dig the commit. PR adds, adds the Adobe Creative Cloud Cleaner tool. Why this is a cool commit is if you are an Adobe user, which most people that use Windows are, it's the reason why they use Windows from an advanced user perspective. <laughs> because most people don't want to use it. They're either, usually most people are there because of the Adobe products and they don't like Mac. Or let's say they just don't want to spend the money for Mac. Uh, or both. That's both me. <laughs> and that's why a lot of times if I have to use Adobe, I'm in Windows. Uh, the Creative Cloud Cleaner tool is absolutely needed because if you're ever working with like different versions of Adobe and you go to install multiple versions, it just becomes a complete headache. And the Cleaner tool does a good job of actually flushing your system of adobe think of it just like eating a bunch of junk food and then you get like really bloated this is just a good way of cleansing the system of all that adobe poo <laughs> uh, i like it though that is cool uh it does have branch conflicts i wonder what uh the branch conflicts are this one and this one don't see any issue with either one of these. Oh, yeah. We'll have to modify this PR because we've changed that. Um, let me see. I'll ask him to pull the changes down and see if he can't just submit the new ones to the features JSON, I want to say. So if we look at the new features JSON, where are you at? Feature JSON. Uh, we're on the wrong PR. What are we? Well, we didn't check out his. Oh, we're on Lee's. Okay. Let's go back to test. All right. Sync that. Perfect. Now let's go back to JSON. So what I need him to do is add in this extra thing. We Because we committed this new one where you do like an order. And then he can actually specify the order in here. And then there's no changing of the XAML file. Um, and I want to say he wants to put it in the feature section. And if we look at the feature section, when you tell config, yeah, we go into feature section. So this that would go into the fixes. It would just be an Adobe one under the fixes section. So it'd be feature JSON. Let's see if he can do that. Um, let's request changes. Say, so, uh, can you pull down the new changes to from the test branch and use feature.json for adding this instead of using the input XAML as this was the old method? Thank you. Request changes. Perfect. All right, cool. We went through all the, the cool PRs. Uh, there's some other ones in here for like just applications, which I, I don't care about those. We'll, I may eventually add them or not, but uh, like Image Magic K is a pretty cool PR. I'll definitely add that. Mega and, and these are a little more obscure. And if it's super obscure, I don't really want to add them just because it, it's going to blow up the tool. And more is not necessarily better in that regard. So that's uh, that's my thought process there. Yeah, eventually I'm going to get the channel points back. I think you guys have brought it up every stream for like the past month or so. So I need to get going on that. Um, overall, from this stream using cursor, it feels very much like VS Code. The AI could be good i think i just need a lot more time with it i'm definitely not signing off on cursor and saying hey use this instead of vs code because right now i feel like it didn't really give me anything extra and a lot of the things i i threw at it didn't necessarily read the file very well and give me a proper one although i did feed it the wrong file uh, when i was trying to do the selection so 
again, jury's not out with that, so we'll have to uh, have to do it. Dexy says a mega sync would be amazing. All right, we'll add it then. I'll add it. We already got the PR there, so that should be fine. All right, y'all. Take it easy. Have a great one. Love y'all, and I will see you all in the next one. Peace.